If you've ever been interested in applying color grading to your photos, then this video is for you. But first, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Brian. I help other photographers like you get better looking photos using apps like Lightroom and Photoshop and other third party apps. Now, let's just dive right in. And the reason why I wanted to do this video is because I think there's some misconception around color grading of what it is. You know, I think a lot of photographers see color grading as the HSL slider, for example, which is the hue, saturation, and luminance sliders in Lightroom. That's not exactly true because color grading is fundamentally different. It works very differently than, for example, the HSL sliders. And color grading actually kind of gets its source from cinema. It's used to imbue a cohesive look in a movie and often to evoke a certain emotion. And oftentimes when you're watching certain movies, those movies are actually defined by the way they're color graded to a degree. And so some of the most popular movies use color grading to enhance the end result. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use color grading for your still images, for your photos, and we're gonna use the color grading panel in Lightroom. All right, so here we are in Lightroom Classic and I have this very basic black to white gradient. Now you'll see that there is pure black on the left and there's pure white on the right. And then kind of hugging those, going from the outer edges inward, from the right you've got the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. And I have a video using a similar gradient explaining how the tone curve works. So I'll put a little card up there right now. And I definitely recommend checking it out because this gradient is the best way to show you how things like the tone curve and color grading works. So the first thing that I wanna tell you about color grading is that it typically is applied towards the end of your post-processing workflow. It's not something you wanna start with at the beginning. You generally wanna get your tones and your colors dialed in before you apply color grading because the color grade is meant to accentuate. It's like that little bit of spice that you add at the end of your recipe. You don't start with a bunch of it at the beginning. It's just a little bit that's used to accentuate the flavor or in this case, the look or style of the photo. So Adobe is not dumb. I know that's kind of an understatement, but the way that they order their panels in Lightroom Classic you can see that you've got the basic panel, which gives you all of your tone and color corrections. You've got the tone curve, which is super important. And then you've got hue, saturation, luminance, and then color grading is at the bottom. And that's important. It's put there on purpose because it's something that should be done towards the end of the processing. So let's go here. Now, because this color gradient is very basic, there's no post-processing that we need to apply. Again, you've got pure white on the right, you've got pure black on the left, and then going from right to left, you've got the highlight region, the midtone region, and the shadow region. Now, for those OG Lightroom users out there, you might remember that there used to be a panel called split toning, and color grading replaced that. And one of the primary differences or improvements, in my opinion, is that with the split toning, you only had the ability to apply hue and saturation to the shadows and highlights. But with color grading, that introduced the midtones as well. So the easiest way for me to show you how this works is to just apply a certain hue to each of the regions of tone. So specifically shadows, highlights, and midtones. Now there are different ways that you can do this. You can either use this kind of three in one view, which has all three of the tonal ranges at once. I prefer going using these individual views. And this is for highlights, this is for midtones, this is for shadows. One of the reasons why I like that is by default, this triangle might be collapsed and you won't see these values, but if you expand them here, you'll actually get a slider value for the hue and saturation, whereas otherwise you'd have to use this little dot, which we will use. All right, so we've got shadows here. The first thing you'll want to do is apply a hue to that region. So what does that mean? Well. Let's go ahead and adjust the hue here. Now you might be wondering, well, nothing's going on. I'm changing the hue, but nothing is changing in the shadows. And that's because we still are set to a saturation of zero. Think of saturation as the strength slider or even like an on off switch or a dimmer. That's probably the best way to think about it. A light switch dimmer. Right now that dimmer is off. So no matter what color you select, there's nothing being applied to that tonal area of the shadows. However, once we go and we start adjusting the saturation, let's just bring it all the way out. Now you start to see a color being applied to the shadow region. Also, what's important to note is that the black is pure black. 
That has not been adjusted, and that's important. This is only applying to the shadow area of the tone. Now, with the saturation at 100, one thing I want you to notice is that, notice as I adjust the saturation slider, this circle here is going to move from 100%, which is fully on, back to the middle, which is fully off. So the, the distance, the radius from the center to the outside of each of these circles, that's the saturation. So again, let's go zero, it's off, it's 100% on. You can also click and just drag in and out. And then here's another thing that I want to show you. If you click, you see this kind of light line that is appearing here? That is kind of a guide, but the guide itself is not fully on. What I mean is if you click and then you accidentally drag up or down a little bit, it'll start to move the hue. And so this can be problematic, especially if you've identified a very specific hue that you wanna apply. So to prevent that from going up or down, you can press and hold the shift key. Now you see what happens, the, the line went from a light gray to a much darker gray. Now this line is locked in and no matter how hard I go up and down, it will not move. So that's just something that if you really want to keep a very specific hue value, press and hold the shift key and drag in and out. All right, so that covers saturation. Now let's talk about hue. Because we've got saturation fully on, as I rotate the color, or in this case here, I'm moving the hue slider, notice how the color in the shadows change. And so here, we'll keep a, this dark blue in the shadows. So we're going from black to blue. Now you might be wondering, well, what if I want to add color to the darkest, darkest blacks? Well, again, you cannot add a color to pure black and you cannot add a color to pure white. Those are just the ways of the world. Um, however, what you can do is you can use this luminance slider, which is also new to the color grading panel. And what you can do is if you increase the luminance value for the shadows, watch what happens to the black. You start to introduce gray into the blacks. And when you apply gray to a black area, it gives it the appearance of making it brighter. But what it allows you to do is apply color to the gray. And then conversely, if we bring it back, what you're doing is you're adding more black to more of the shadow area. So there's less of that color. There's less of a window here for the hue to apply to the shadows. So again, use luminance just to, if you want to apply a little bit of more of this color grade to the shadow area. Do not use this as a way to brighten the shadows in your photo. You should use the uh, either the tone curve to do that or the shadow slider here in conjunction with the black slider or you know with the highlights and whites if you're going for the brighter component. All right, so that's the shadows. I'm gonna move over to midtones. And just like before, let's take that saturation slider to 100. And in this case here, I'm gonna put like a yellow somewhere right around there. All right, so now you can see a distinction between the different tonal values. You've got blue in the shadows. Now we've got this kind of yellow in the midtones. And just like with shadows, you have luminance. So here we can add more uh, brightness to the midtones, which will add a little bit more of that color, or we can darken it, which will add a little bit less of it and it'll kind of constrict the space. And then finally, you've got highlights. So here, one more time, let's just add, we'll just actually stick here with this kind of reddish hue. And so you can kind of see this color gradient now. But again, white is still pure white and black is still pure black. Um, if I go ahead and add some darkness, you know, darkening the luminance here, notice how we're starting to get some of the, the red bleed in. And then if I brighten it, the white kind of bleeds out. Now there are two other very important sliders below the huge saturation and luminance, and those are blending and balance. And those are really powerful too. With blending, watch what happens. It's, it's kind of what you would expect. If I bring the blending towards 100, you'll see that the transition between the colors becomes very, very gradual. It's almost like a feather. And so you can see how they blend in together. If I bring it to zero, you'll start to see these very defined borders between the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. 
And so that can be used to control that transition between those three tonal regions. For balance, this is a bias slider. If you want more of the shadow color grade to apply to the image, bring the balance slider to the left. You see as I do that, how the blue starts extending into the midtones and highlights? There still is a tiny fade of the midtone and highlight colors, but it's predominantly shadows. Same thing with the highlights. If I bring it to the right, the highlight color starts to take over. And so you can use this to further bias which color you want to take over the image. And that's pretty much color grading in general. That is the concept of color grading. And there's one more view here you can see, and that is the global. Now, you should use this if you wanna apply a specific hue to the entirety of your photo. So here again, let's kind of bring saturation up. Now notice what's happening is it's applying this red tint to the entirety of the photo, except again for the white and the black. And as we adjust the hue, you can see that whatever color we're selecting that's applying to the entire image. So this is something I would use very sparingly, if at all, I don't really use this much, but if you do, let's say want to add, for example, an overall uh, blue tint to the photo, this is one of the ways to do that. Um, I would definitely do it this way over say using the temperature control of your white balance. It's not something that you should, that is not a substitute. So again, global is just if you want to apply a certain tint to the entire photo. Now, you remember at the beginning of the video, I told you how some photographers kind of confuse color grading with HSL. I'm going to show you why that is important to understand the distinction, because it is a very important distinction. So first, I'm going to go back to the three up view so we can see all three of the different tonal regions and their color grades. Now, let's go here to hue saturation and luminance. You can see here we have this kind of blue shade here. So what would happen, or what do you think would happen if I took, say, the blue slider saturation, I cranked it all the way up, or even the luminance? You would expect this blue to get more punchy and brighter. So if I take the blue and I bring it to 100, even the purple, and even the magenta, let's just take all of these sliders here and let's bring them to 100. What are you seeing? If you see any change at all, then there's something wrong because nothing happens. I mean, I'll take all of the luminance sliders here and I'm bringing them up. You would expect to see colors getting brighter, but nothing is changing. So what's going on? The reason is that the HSL sliders apply to the actual colors in the image itself, whereas the color grade is applying a hue to a specific tonal region of the image. There are two nuanced but very important differences. And that's why when we use these sliders here, nothing actually happens. You can take the target adjustment tool here and notice how it doesn't actually select any color. Normally, as you are viewing an image, if you take the target adjustment tool and hover over an area, you would see that respective color highlight over here. But here, nothing is happening because there's actually no color in this image. It's just a pure black to white tonal gradient. All right, now that you have a better idea of what color grading is and isn't and how to use it effectively, let's apply these techniques to a photo. But before we do, just give me a minute, let me tell you about a new color grade preset and LUT pack that I released. I built these for photographers who want to apply a color grade look to their photos really quickly just by hovering over uh, one of the presets. These were built with very specific kinds of photos in mind and they're all very tasteful. It's not like over the top looks. Uh, so if you want to check it out, I'd really appreciate it. Just click on the link below. It helps support my small business. And I really think you're going to like them. And the best part is, is that you get 15 custom built Adobe presets that will work in Lightroom and Photoshop on the desktop and on mobile, as well as 15 LUTs that will work in any app that uses LUTs like uh, On One Photo Raw, Skylum Luminar Neo, and even video editing apps like Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. All right, let's jump back in. Okay, so you can see here is a nice autumn photo that I took in Colorado a few years ago. There's not much that you really even need to do, but remember, I told you, the first thing you'd want to do is edit for tone and color. Looking at the histogram, everything is pretty much good, but I'm gonna brighten it up a bit, uh, move the white point and open the black point a little bit, and then add some highlights and shadows. And so just even from that, it does a nice job of 
making the image look evenly exposed. Also go ahead and add a little bit of a vibrance boost, a little bit of clarity, and a little bit of texture. Then, you know me, I love my S curves, so I'm gonna drop a point here, a point here, and a point here. Let's open up the highlights a little bit, deepen the shadows, and open up the midpoint. Now, I'm also gonna go for a kind of a vintagey look. So to do that, I'm gonna take the black point here and I'm gonna bring it up and that's gonna introduce a little bit of gray in the shadows. And you can see now it's getting, getting that faded look. And once again, I've got a video covering the entire tone curve. So check that out if you wanna learn about how to use this super powerful tool. With that done, let's go ahead and we'll add a little bit of color grading. I typically like to start with the shadows first. And so I'm gonna to go to the shadows here and it, the way that I work is I take saturation up to 100% and then I move the hue slider. And typically in the shadows, I like to keep it on the cooler side. So usually around here is where I'll go. And then I bring the saturation slider back to zero and I slowly introduce it. And I kind of stop until I get a hint of the, the, the hue in that tone. And that's the thing. In most cases, I would say you want to be very sparing. You don't want to go over the top with your color grades. You don't want that to take the center stage unless that is the point, unless that is what you're going for. Again, I mentioned that at the very beginning of the video that a lot of cinematographers will use color grading to imbue a very specific cohesive look or an emotion. But we are just going for a little bit of a boost. For midtones, let's go again saturation, find a color in the midtones here that looks nice. I think this yellowish color here, yellowish orange looks good. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of that. You don't even need to add midtones all the time. In a lot of cases, the split tone of shadows and highlights will be enough. But here I think it does a really nice job. And then finally with the highlights, let's go here and find a color here again, going for around the same color as the midtones and right around there. Now with the blending slider, I want there to be less of a transition. I want it to be a bit more abrupt. So I'm gonna bring this more to the left here. And I wanna balance it towards the warmer tones. So there, that looks really good. And you can see if we toggle the color grade panel on and off, notice how it's very subtle, but it's there. Like I see it, I hope you can see it too. Sometimes YouTube's uh, video compression kind of makes it harder to see these effects, but trust me, it's a very subtle change. It's very important. Now, if I wanted, for example, to add a little bit more of say the shadow color, because remember there's a lot of pure black here. If I wanted some shadow color, I can increase the luminance slider and that'll bring a bit more of that blue tone into the shadows. But I think it's okay here, especially because I already added gray to the black point here uh, in the tone curve earlier. So I don't wanna do too much more to that. All right, so that is what color grading is and isn't and how to most effectively apply it to your photos. I hope you found it helpful. If you wanna learn more about the tone curve, like I mentioned, check out this video here. I think it'll help a lot. And again, if you enjoy these videos, I'd love it if you hit the thumbs up button, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon, all that good stuff. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks a lot, everyone.